Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on the News. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, we're going to be discussing Swiss watch exports. The results were released for April 2020 and it really was a, a harsh month for um, Swiss watches. Um, this um, pandemic has really had a, had a pretty adverse effect on uh, Swiss watch companies and um, uh, exports were, were down uh, quite substantially, which is um, unfortunate for the industry. Um, so I'm going to run through the numbers with you, um, give you my perspective on um, what what happened uh, this last month, and then what I think the results for for um, May are going to be. Now, I think this has been a really fun series for me to do um, because it's um, it gives us kind of like a pulse on, on what watches are doing um, that month. Um, so yeah, that's going to be what we're going to be discussing today. But before we get into that, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button for us and subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos. Um, so I'm just going to go over March results really quick. I'm just pulling it up on, on our website here. So uh, watch exports were down uh, about 21%, 22% um, in March. Um, this was kind of the start of when the, the pandemic kind of took hold of the, the world and um, really did rock um, watch exports down about 20, 22%. Um, precious metals were down um, quite substantially, as well as stainless steel. Um, interesting enough, gold, steel, two-ton watches were up, which, which I thought was kind of an interesting take on it. Um, the leading countries uh, were the United States, China, Japan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. So still Asia, a huge Asian presence in, that, in the top five um, places where, where um, watches were going. Um, as far as uh, my April predictions were when we uh, released um, this article, really thought um, that April was going to be a really tough month. It really has had um, pretty ad adverse effects on on um, the economy as well as uh, watch exports in general. So diving into the April results, um, watch export watch exports were extremely low in April. Um, it actually collapsed about 81%. I never thought that would actually come out of my mouth, but 81% is a huge fall from where they were previously. Um, watch exports were 328 million um, Swiss francs um, across borders. Um, this really shows the impact of um, of the pandemic on, on this industry. I think that the reason why this happened was a lot of Swiss watch uh, companies um, stopped production, distribution, and of course sales were, were there were no sales because um, of lockdown measures that a lot of countries had. Um, but as you know, manufacturers like Automa, PG, Rolex, they closed their doors for, for their manufacturing um, facilities. So there wasn't anything being made and nothing could really go out. Um, China really um, was, a, was impacted hugely and I'll get into that late, later, but um, they were a very big market that Swiss watch exports rely on and they were hit very, very uh, hard. The 12 month moving average really moved down to about six or 7%. Um, this graph isn't really a great great thing to look at, and I don't know if we're going to get um, get to a, to a positive 12 month moving average for a very long time. Being, this was what, being that watches in general are a luxury, um, it's going to take uh, consumers a while before they start um, buying uh, watches again, because they're going to be um, keeping cash and spending it on uh, products that they uh, deem are um, essential to, to living, and I don't think watches, even though we are watch enthusiasts, I don't think that that really is going to be the case. If you look at um, if you look at watches by the different types of metal, everything fell um, fell between seventy five and ninety percent. Um, so you can see gold steel watches fell ninety percent, um, steel fell seventy seven percent, to overall an eighty two percent decline in, in wrist watches by by, by metals. Uh, looking at uh, the main markets, um, you saw some common names here, but some interesting names within the within the top five. So China, Hong Kong, the United States, South Korea, Japan were the top five. Germany snuck in at number six. But you can see that change it was really rocked. Um, China was down 16%, which is was the best um, in that in that top five or six uh, list. Um, but you can see everyone from uh, number two all the way down to number six. We're down uh, between you know 68 and 80 percent in watch sales. Um, that's a huge amount uh, when when you think about it. Uh, you know, 80 uh, percent de decline. It's just it's just um, crazy to think about. Um, it was interesting to see that there were some Asian markets in there. Um, I think they're leading the way, even though that they are they probably got hit pretty hard as well. Um, 
South Korea was an interesting one to see there. I wonder, you know, what kind of led that. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to see. And then if we look at wristwatches by price category, you can see that both units and value fell for every price segment. Um, the total, you, you, we saw a 79% fall in units and an 82% fall in value. So what this is essentially meaning is every single um, export that they had fell, they sold, they exported way uh, fewer uh, watches in each price category, and they also, the amount that they were selling them for fell as well. Um, I think this is gonna have an effect on uh, prices of watches that we are selling um, that, are, that are being sold right now. Um, interestingly, I've seen a couple of, in of Instagram posts about watches actually rising in value. I don't know the validity of that, but I would assume that they would actually go the same way as, as um, the export results um, were going. I'm going to open it up a little bit and just move over to the, um, the, the world distribution of Swiss watch exports list. So um, if we look at, let's, we can just take China, you can see they had a variance of 16%, Hong Kong 83%. Um, and uh, what what was uh, uh, I thought was kind of interesting is the only positive number on this list uh, was the number 26th market. And this was the variation between 2018 numbers and 2020 numbers. And this was the country of Nigeria. They actually saw a 1.5% increase of variation in Swiss watch exports from 2018 or 2018 to 2020, which I thought was um, quite, quite interesting. Um, there's an interesting um, breakout of it by region. So um, if you look at uh, the, the uh, total variation of each of the different um, regions within the world, Asia was um, the, uh, I guess, the least <laughs> affected by, by the change in Swiss watch export at negative 75%. And then you go all the way down to Oceania, which saw um, basically a um, contraction of 93%, which is, an absurd amount when you really think about it. Um, you know, and, and, and Ocean itself was only doing about one million uh, worth of um, uh, of um, exports. So um, it's it's pr it's uh, pretty bad. You know, when I saw this report, it really did uh, remind me that watches are are luxury goods, and um, it's um, it's. It's unfortunate to see that this is happening, that, that the industry that we love is being affected, but um, it doesn't really change the passion that we have for these things. Um, watches will always be on, on our minds, and, and um, even though exports fell now, and it may take a little while uh, for this recovery to to happen for, for watch exports, um, they will come back, uh, and, uh, and they will definitely come back stronger. Um, looking at this month, the month of May, uh, my production, predictions for the month of May are kind of similar to the results in April. I'd say they probably won't be as bad as the month of April. I think we're kind of looking at something between what we saw in March and something that we saw in April. Um, the country started to open up again. Um, commerce had, had started to pick up a little bit, but there weren't people, there wasn't, there's still not a lot of foot traffic going into these stores. I'd say the companies with online presence, with online presence will probably end up exporting a little bit more, um, but I don't think we're gonna see any type of recovery um, anytime soon. If you look at the, the 12 month moving average, I'm predicting probably like a, uh, kind of like a, a Nike sign uh, uh, for the recovery. It's gonna be a very slow increase um, up to the levels that we, we were seeing previously, but it's gonna be slow. And um, it's just something we're gonna have to deal with. So uh, I know this was kind of a doom and gloom uh, episode uh, of this, but these are the results. I wanna make sure you guys are, are keeping up with what's actually happening uh, to Swiss watch exports. I hope this was educational for you. Um, let me know what you think uh, is gonna happen when for the, for the May results. It, it's gonna be interesting to see what your predictions are of what um, exports are gonna do uh, for this month. It really sucks that it takes them, that these uh, results are, take a little time for, to, be, to be released, but we'll be covering that um, in the next episode of the series, so be sure to um, stay tuned for that. Also, if you didn't do the beginning video, be sure to hit that like button if you like these types of videos. Um, that one like is going to go to uh, keeping the watch industry alive. Um, so uh, be sure to hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos. Um, if you haven't seen any of our other videos, be sure to check them out. We have a playlist of all of our Swiss watch export um, uh, kind of videos where we discuss them. But we also do um, different types of videos like uh, to discuss legendary watch figures. Um, we talk about releases 
give your opinion about what's going on in the watch industry. So be sure to check out our, our other videos. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.